All right. Quiz over sections four three and four four tomorrow. Tomorrow night's homework is the test review, which is in Polaris, so you can find it in there already if you want to get started on it. Just to practice some extra problems. Certainly, you could do that. Okay. But these are kind of more specific for the quiz tomorrow. Quite honestly, as long as you've been staying up on the homework, doing the homework, you know, and you've been doing fine on it, you're going to do fine. All right. So it says find dy dx, that's our derivative. We have our inverse trig functions that made their appearance in these sections. So when you see tangent inverse, what comes to mind? Like what's the shell of it? What do we start with? Would you write mm -hmm. one over one plus something squared, right? So what's the something? The four x to the fifth. And then? Yeah, use a chain rule. 20x. 20x. Good. Okay, so that ends up multiplying by the numerator, giving us 20x to the 4. And then in the denominator, I have 1 plus 16x to the 10. Can I reduce the x to the 4th and the x to the 10? Yeah, nope. Why not? Because they're multiplied. They're like the 1 and the 16. But these are multiplied. Oh. You can't factor in. That's it. You can't factor it out of both terms of the denominator. So therefore, you cannot reduce. So what do we think about those? Just because I'm asking you tangent inverse on this problem does not mean it's going to be tangent inverse. Okay? Be prepared for any of the six. Okay? Next, find the slope of the tangent line to the graph at x equals 1 half. And it gives you y equals cosine inverse of x squared. Now for this right here, my x value is 1 half. To write the equation of the tangent line, I do need a point. So I probably should take and plug it into the calculator. Cosine inverse of 1 fourth, right? Because 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So for that one there, you would need a calculator. It's what? Oh, it does just say slope of the line. You're right. There we go. That means we don't need that point. Or that calculator. All right, so here we go. We just find the derivative. So what do we write down for cosine? What's the shell of it? Negative one One minus whatever squared. So whatever is x squared. And then don't forget to chain rule, multiply by 2x. So here we get negative 2x over the square root of 1 minus x to the 4th. Now, they didn't just ask for y prime here. They asked for when x is 1 half. So I have to come here and plug the 1 half in. So I get negative 2 times 1 half. So that numerator becomes negative 1. <clears throat> I get the square root of 1 minus 1 half to the 4th which is the square root of 1 minus 1 16, which we can't leave it just hanging out like that. Like, you can't have a fraction in a fraction. What is 1 minus 1 16? 15 16. 15 16. So this gives me negative 1 over the square root of 15 16. Again, can't leave a fraction in a fraction like that. You know when you have a fraction under a square root that it means the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. What's the square root of 16? So this is negative 1 over the square root of 15 over 4. Still, I have a fraction in the fraction. But can't I now multiply by 4 to get it to cancel? Because multiplying the top and bottom by 4 is just like multiplying by 1. So final answer negative 4 over the square root of 15. If you want, you could put negative 4 rad 15 over 15. That is also a correct answer. But AP at this point is like, listen, we don't need you doing any more algebra than necessary. You're fine leaving it at this. Okay, both are correct though. Okay. Everybody see how I got this final one? Multiply the top and bottom. Okay, next one. Find the derivative of this one. So we also had our exponentials that appeared in section 4.4. So is this a product rule question right here? 
<clears throat> How do you know? Because it's not, because uh, it's an X bone. Um, no. It's not confirmed. It's not a two, X. there's only one X, right. Because I could have 2xe to the 2x to the 4. And so think about your answer. You said it's in the exponent. Well, we'll be a little bit more specific, right? It's not two terms. Well, it's only one term anyway, you know, because they're all multiplied. It's really only one term. Both of these are. But the key is that there's only one x. Okay. All right, so here we go. So that means... The 3 is just coming down. What's the derivative of e to the 2x to the 4? e to the 2x squared. But then don't forget the chain rule. What's the derivative of 2x to the 4th? 8x to the 3rd. And so clean it up. 8 times 3 is 24. x to the 3rd, e to the 2x to the 4th. Okay. Questions on that one? How are you doing on these like you did them yesterday? Okay, on them. Secant inverse. What's the shell look like? Like prime one equals? One over the value of the value. The chain of something where it minus one for both. Right, like that. Okay. Secant and cosecant both have those. Secant is positive, cosecant is negative. And so our 2x to the 6th goes in to these places right here. But then, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that's 12x to the 5th. All right, so here we have 12x to the 5th over absolute value of 2x to the 6th, square root of 4x to the 12th minus 1. Two goes into two one time, two goes into 12 six times. X to the fifth goes into X to the fifth one time. It goes in this, there's still an X left over. So for this, I have a six left on top, an absolute value of X, and then the square root of four X to the 12 minus one. Don't need the absolute value there. Can X be negative? Yeah, if it was an X squared, X to the fourth, you can take it away. Yeah, don't take it away too early, because like over here you'd say, hey, it's an even power. That means I can take it away. But after the reducing, it changes it back to an odd power. Okay, questions about that one? Okay, natural logs also came up during these. Those weren't too bad, right? Derivative of a natural log is what? One over whatever times the derivative. Or whatever times the derivative, which is just one here. So this is the derivative. So that was part of the question. It says, find the domain of f prime of x. Correct answer, yes, is 5 to infinity. But we base it more on this guy than this guy, right? Because we can't have more domain than what we started with. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Find dy dx, that's just the derivative of this. So what are we going to have for that? Good. Am I done? Times? 12x to the third minus 6x squared. Okay. So we have 12x to the third minus 6x squared over 3x to the 4th minus 2x cubed. Am I done now? Because what? I can factor what? x squared. x squared. So if I factor x squared out of the numerator, I get 12x minus 6. And if I factor an x squared out of the denominator, I get 3x squared minus 2x. Those cancel. So are there any numbers that all of these have in common? No. If there were, I could have factored it out up there, but there weren't. Like, I could factor a 6 out, but that's not going to help me. It's not going to reduce at all. Um, 
I can't, I could still factor another X out of these as well, but it's not the same. So my final answer is just 12X minus six over three X squared minus two X. Can you also write it as like six and then two X minus mm -hmm. one? Yep, 6 and 2x minus 1. You can even have the bottom as x and 3x minus 2. Or any rendition of those tops and bottoms. Write the equation. Here's the equation of the tangent line. I knew everyone. Write the equation of the tangent line to y equals e to the x at x equals 2. Huh? Oh, you don't have that one? Well, let's add it on then. Let's say stop it. Okay. I might have added them later. But that's okay. We can do this, right? I guess. That doesn't work. So tell me what we need to do. Okay, I'm going to take the derivative. That's one thing I need to do. Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> e to the x. And then? Say it again. Find the y to the point. So if I plug a 2 into this original, I get e squared. Don't I need to find the slope at that point, too? So I need to find the slope when x is 2. So y prime is e to the second. That's my slope. So my equation of my tangent line is y minus y1 equals m, which is e to the second as well, times x minus x1. Of course, I could leave it like that. It does simplify um, to y equals e squared x minus 2e squared plus e squared, which is y equals e squared x minus e squared. So that is another way it could be written as well. Or I could have e squared times x minus 1. Like, yeah, we, we can this. But you're fine to leave the equation of the tangent line. Unless it's multiple choice, then you got to find whatever form it was. Okay. Here's another one. Find dy dx of y equals 2 to the tangent of 5x. So let's see, y prime equals, when we have 2 to a power, what is the derivative? Two to a power, what do you think? Two, two, I mean, natural log in some way. Okay, so it's, it stays the same for the first part, just like e to the x. And then, yes, you're right. There is a natural log in there. What do I take the natural log of? The 2. Right. Okay. But then, chain rule. So I go back up here and have to multiply by the derivative of tangent of 5x. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Secant squared of 5x. And then I have to peel that layer away and multiply by the derivative of None of these ever combine together. Do not, somebody just said, do not say, oh, well, 2 times 5 is 10 to the tangent of 5x. This base is not the same, so I cannot combine those two things together. Okay? That's your answer. Like, you don't even have to move it around. Just keep it. Well, then let me, for the fun of it, Find dy dx of y equals log base 9 of x squared plus 2. That way we will have reviewed everything, you know. All right, so logs. It's not a natural log this time, it's a log. Very similar, starts very similar to... A natural log, though, right? Y prime equals, what do you think? Mm. 
What is this? Oh, a nine. Uh, <laughs> it's a really ugly nine. I will agree with you on that. Here. Is that better? <laughs> uh huh. Isn't one over x squared plus two times uh, natural log of nine? You got it. Yeah. It's the beginning of it. There's always that chain rule. Right. Times 2x. So we get 2x over x squared plus 2. Because there's more than one term there, we do need parentheses. And then natural log of 9. And those very seldom would reduce. I, I mean, if it would reduce if this was like an x cubed in here. Because then you'd have a 3x squared up here and you'd have an x cubed down there that some of those x's would reduce. But if there's two terms, it's not. That, my friends, is your review, okay? That covers anything that you're going to see tomorrow. Do you have any questions from any of the homeworks from these last couple of sections that you want me to go over, talk about, explain, or anything like that? <coughs> I don't know, I haven't made it up yet. But it's going to be right around there. I'm not going to have any AP multiple choice on there. Okay. Don't have to worry about that. Well, and not until we have the opportunity to go over those. So there'll be a day that I do all those together. Okay. Is there a particular one, particular one from any of the homework? Just tell me the section and the problem number, and I'm happy to go through it. If you struggle through one, even if you got it, you just want to see it. Anything. Yeah. Um, you do 4.4. 24, absolutely. Okay. This is number 24 from section 4.4. Okay. This problem here gave you y equals 1 over log base 2 of x. And it asked you to take and find the derivative. I don't think they even gave us a point to plug in. All right, so you have two options, and so I'll let you choose since you asked the problem. Option one, I can use the quotient rule on it. Or option two, I could rewrite it as log base 2 of x and put a little negative 1 in the exponent, like pull it up, and do, let me show you what I mean, do a power chain rule to it. So you choose. Power chain rule? Okay. So the negative 1 is going to come out front. And it's going to knock down by 1. So that gives me negative 2. The inside stays the same. But then from there, I have to take and peel that outside layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside. This here is your 1 over um, whatever's on the inside, x, and then the natural log of the base. Peel that layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, so I don't really have to worry about it there. Now, I do need to put this back, though. So this becomes negative 1 on top, because this is going to go downstairs. And then I can have my x natural log of 2, and then times log base 2 of x, but this whole thing here is squared. <laughs> So I'm changing the negative back to positive. Okay? And that's your answer. All right? All right. Is there another question from any of the homeworks at all? Do you just want a C done? Can you do 48 on plus x squared base 2? Ah, yes. Got the two x's. Number 48 was y equals x to the 1 over natural log of x. Kind of messy with that right there. All right. When you have x's in both the base and in the exponent, we said what you could do is you could just take the natural log of each side. Okay? 
So when I take the natural log of this side, I get this. When I take the natural log of this side, what happens is this exponent goes out front because it's a logarithm. So we have natural log of y equals 1 over natural log of x, natural log of x, like so. Right? Are you okay with that step? Yeah. Okay. Now here, look at this. Those cancel. So I have natural log of y equals 1. I have not taken the derivative of this yet. I think the directions asked us to take the derivative. So now let's take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y, but then the derivative of y is dy dx, and the derivative of 1 is 0. And multiply both sides by y. dy dx here is equal 0. Uh-huh. I can put say the answer. I just can check it. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You just wrote it in log minus form. Those two that are together get separated. That guy comes between them. And then from there. All right, another question? Is there another one you want me to go over? Yep, great. So we are not rushed for time. Can we do 42? 42? Mm -hmm. Yes, I wanted to look up here. Yeah, just have to go over the quicker the other two. Just making sure there wasn't any other assignment. All right, number 42 has log. So let's see, f of x equals log of square root of x plus 1. When there is not a base written right here, what is there? A 10. Okay. And x plus 1 under a square root, doesn't it mean this as well? So that's going to come in handy in just a minute as well. All right, so to find the derivative, of our logarithm, we have 1 over whatever's here, square root of x plus 10, or sorry, x plus 1, times the natural log of whatever the base is, which in this case is a 10. Then I have to peel that outside layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside. This is the inside. So it's going to become 1 half x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, right? It's how our chain rule goes out front. Max down by 1. What's on the inside stays the same. Then I peel that layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside, but it's just 1. Well, this x plus 1 to the negative 1 half needs to go down here and change to positive. And when it does, it becomes a square root of x plus 1. So this is 1 over the square root of x plus 1, natural log of 10. And this is 1 over 2 square roots of x plus 1. But both of these things are multiplied right here. So when you have two square roots that are the same that are multiplied together, isn't it just what's underneath? x plus 1. So this is 1 over 2 times x plus 1 times natural log of 10. Of course, you can have 2x plus 2 natural log of 10. That's fine. You just need to have parentheses with those over there. Mm -hmm. It's right here. So this is that, or the one half power. So the one half came out front and knocked down by one. That's where that came from. One goes on the top, the two goes on the bottom, right down here. 
one half. This is one over square root of x plus one times one, one over two radical. Okay. Something else. So the final answer of this one was down here, this guy right here. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 42 asked you for the domain of that? I think so, yeah. Oh, I didn't have the domain down. But okay, the domain of that, when we look at it, all it says is, hey, x can't be negative 1. We have to go back and look at the original function up here. This right here. The square root of x plus 1 has to be greater than 0 because we can't take a log of a negative number. So we can square both sides. We get x plus 1 is greater than 0. x is greater than negative 1. So the domain is from negative 1 to infinity. <coughs> and we knew x couldn't equal negative 1. That's okay. It says it right there. So this would be the domain. So even when I ask you for just the domain of this, even though we only use the original, I'm still looking, there's still points for finding the derivative of the function. So make sure you find the derivative. Okay. Another question? Something, anything. Let me just try to put this down. My voice would be okay. 